We are focusing on the letter to the Ephesians. We have completed chapter 2. Last week we saw how God is building a new temple in which he wants to dwell in this world. Heaven and earth is connected in the temple and that temple is you and I and the church. Church is the temple of God. When we come to worship here, heaven and earth is united. Therefore, when you sing songs, when you worship God, when you praise the name of Jesus Christ, you are combined with heavenly host. The people who have gone in heaven are also worshipping Jesus along with angels. The angels in heaven are worshipping God. And when we worship in the church, we join with them together. So heaven and earth comes together to worship God. And therefore, amazing things happen. Miracles happen. Jesus is a living God who can change your life, who can change my life, who can change our circumstances. The earthly life can become heavenly life because we're connected in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Same God is in heaven, same God is on earth. Sometimes we think that God in heaven is different, God in earth is different. No! God is united. The kingdom of God is one, not two. Heaven and earth is one kingdom of God. And when we come to worship, we are in the kingdom of God. Today I want to talk about beauty out of ashes. That is, when we suffer in life, what I said is, suffering is not the end in itself. We suffer in life one way or the other. There is so much suffering in the world. Sometimes life is so smoothly going, everything is fine. And suddenly something happens and we face all kinds of sufferings. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, when you suffer, that suffering is not end in itself. That suffering is leading you to some other place. That suffering is a stepping stone into the kind of life God wanted you and I to have. Therefore I said beauty out of ashes. Looks like everything is gone, everything is sad, everything is miserable. Life has no meaning, life has no purpose. But if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, he is able to change your suffering into something much more beautiful. He can change the garment of mourning into garment of joy and dancing. When we are so sad and sorrow, He can take away that sad and sorrow out of our life. Give us the spirit of joy and peace and rejoicing. That's what Paul is talking today from Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 to 13. Paul is giving us example from his own life, from the life of many other apostles, how suffering turned into something amazing. So let us read first what Paul is saying and then we will focus our attention into this. Let's read together Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1 to 13. For this reason I Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. Okay just a moment when he says for this reason I Paul the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles he wanted to say something and suddenly he forgot or he wanted who wants to change his train of thought he, he before then that last week we saw he said you are the temple of God God is building an amazing temple together with Jews and Gentiles and therefore he said for therefore for this reason for the sake of you Gentile he wanted to say something but suddenly he remembers something and it changes his thought and he goes into a detour he's saying something else slightly different the his main focus was you are the temple of God Jews and Gentiles have come together but all of a sudden he takes a detour while he was writing suddenly you know as you write sometimes the writers you know they have one thing to write in mind but as they go on they remember something and then they change the paragraph so he changes the paragraph and says something different and now let us read what does he say surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you for that is 
the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly in reading this then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to people in other generation as it has now been revealed by the spirit of God's holy apostles and prophets all of a sudden he wants to say something about himself he said you know this amazing thing that is happening right now that God is building a new temple this mystery was hidden from ages past many people did not know but it was revealed to me God's grace that was given to me surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me he is talking about his conversion experience on the road to Damascus he is talking about the revelation that came to him in the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, he remembers, oh, this gospel that I am preaching, how amazing it was that he sent his son to reveal himself to me. And that was by the grace of God. God was so gracious to me. God was so, so favoring me that he revealed himself to me. This amazing mystery of building this amazing temple of God was revealed to me on the road to Damascus, which I wrote about it to you. He must have written some other letters to the Ephesians. So he said, you know about my life, of course, but I want you to remember how God revealed to me. Not only that, he said this was hidden, but then he made known to the people, he revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. Now Paul is one of the apostles. He is not the only person whom God revealed. He is one of the apostles. And then prophets. In chapter 1 he said, The church, Jesus Christ laid the foundation of the church on the apostles and the prophets. And Jesus is the cornerstone. The prophets and the apostles are the foundation of the church. And Jesus is the cornerstone who is building the church. And then he said, he revealed it to me. And then he goes, this mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharer together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, that is again, least of all the apostles you would have said. This grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. Two times he repeats this mystery, mystery, mystery and this mystery is the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the gospel, Jesus Christ paid the penalty for sin and therefore Jews and Gentiles are now together. The gospel is now revealed. It has come to us. And then he said, his intent was that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authority in heavenly places. Not only in this world, but even the heavenly places, the demonic world, the spiritual world also should know that Jesus Christ has done completely away with power of sin and Satan. Now the kingdom of God has been united. God has brought salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us this gospel and by the power of this gospel the Gentiles and the Jews are now able to experience the boundless riches of Christ. Amazing life we have in Christ. Sometimes we think life is all about this world. We get up in the morning, we go to work, we come back home, we cook dinner, we eat, we sleep, we get up in the morning, we have all the problems, we worry about this, and then we get old and we die and buried. That's not life all about. Life is much more beyond our natural mind can comprehend right now. He said that boundless riches of Christ has come to us through the power of the gospel. And therefore, verse 11, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. 
Remember these two words. In Him and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Now, this is the verse 1 and verse 13 are connected. You know, verse, verse 1, he said, I, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, I am, I am the pri He was most likely in Roman prison at this time. He did not know what would be the outcome of his imprisonment. It could be he would be killed or it could be that he would be released. So most likely it was Paul's first Roman imprisonment. And in the prison, he would be chained both the sides with two Roman guards. And he had no freedom to move, but he could meet with people. People could meet with him and he could preach the gospel. He could write letters. He was in prison. He suffered so much. And therefore, he said, I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Therefore, I said, beauty out of ashes. Out of the suffering, God brings something beautiful in the life of the Apostle Paul. You know, Paul had a very promising life. In Romans chapter 8 verse 28, Paul said, God works everything for our good. Whatever happens, it will be eventually turn out to be something good for us. So he said, everything God will turn for our good and for his glory. And you know, Paul's life was marked with suffering. So are the lives of other apostles. Paul had a promising life on earth. You know, before he met Jesus Christ, Paul was a great scholar. He was a great religious leader. He was the Pharisee. He made a great name for himself. He was most likely born the same time like Jesus was born. He may have been the contemporary or same age with Jesus. Or slightly younger, we don't have the data. But he had a great future ahead of him in this world. But when he was going to Damascus, Jesus arrested him. Jesus said, Paul, why do you persecute him? He was killing the Christian. He was arresting them. He was putting them in prison. He wanted to destroy the church. But Jesus said, Paul, I need you. Come. I want you to go to the Gentiles. I have called you. I have appointed you to be the apostle to the Gentiles. So Paul spent most of his life on the road full of suffering. If you read the letter to the second Corinthians, we see Paul's suffering listed. So much suffering. He never had a one certain place to stay. He never had sufficient money all the time. He worked with his own hand to feed his own stomach and to support his fellow workers. He was beaten many, many times. He was put in prison according to the Clement of Rome. He was put in prison seven times. Sometimes he was stoned to death. And at time he was left, they, they thought that he's dead and gone. At time he was shipwrecked and many times he, he was even in danger of wild beast. Christians were against him. Jews were against him. Roman governments were against him. Everyone wanted to destroy this man's life. He had too much suffering in his life. He suffered so much. Eventually, maybe about the, by the time he was in second Roman imprisonment, he must be somewhere in the mid-60s. And he was killed. He was beheaded <clears throat> for the sake of the gospel by the Roman Emperor Nero. His life was marked with suffering. He said, I bear on my body the marks of suffering. He said, not single space is left in my body where it is not bruised because he has beaten many, many times. But this man continued to preach the mystery. You know the word mystery. Boundless riches of Christ. Here is a single solitary man some people say he was married and wife died some people say he never married some people say his wife left but we don't know but by the time he came to know jesus christ he was a single person and he had no family nothing no one in this world his only single most purpose in life was 
to share this boundless riches of God's glory in Christ Jesus given to the believer so that Gentiles will also come to the saving knowledge of Jesus out of his suffering something amazing happened that is the Gentiles have come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ what did he do? As he began to write the Ephesians, his mind for a moment takes a detour, I say. He began to see how God has used his suffering to bring the Jews and Gentiles together into making one living temple in which God dwells. He suffered so much. If Paul was not there at that time, Gentiles will have to go through the Jewish route to come to Jesus. They had to become circumcised, follow the Mosaic law. But it was Paul who said, no, in Christ Jesus, Jews and Gentiles equally are brought together to make a new living temple in which God dwells by his Holy Spirit. Paul's suffering turned into an amazing gospel of Jesus Christ that we have today. So he is talking about this living temple that came out of his suffering. He ministered to this living temple. Then he, but then he looks at his life and says, this is all for you that I'm suffering, that I'm a prisoner. I'm suffering for you Gentiles. You know, at one time, Paul would have nothing to do with the Gentiles. He would not touch them. He would not speak to them. He would not eat with them. He would not enter into their house. He would not even go to their villages. He was a so dedicated Jewish Pharisee, a fanatic. But today, because of the grace of God, his eyes that were blinded were opened and he said, now I am suffering for you Gentiles. The, the, the re imprisonment I am is on behalf of you so that you can come to the unsearchable riches of Christ. So that you can enjoy the boundless life, eternal life, amazing life. So that you can also come to Jesus with confidence. Then he said, God revealed the mystery of the gospel to the apostles and the prophets and Paul was one of the most unlikely ones. He said, I'm the least, I'm the most unlikely one. But because of his amazing grace, he saved a sinner like me. He saved a rebel like me. He saved a blinded person like me and he gave me this gift of suffering. Now, when we think about the grace and the favor of God, we think everything good and beautiful, everything smooth and everything rosy. But Paul says, by grace I have been made a servant and this grace has helped me to continue to suffer on your behalf. Because I'm suffering, the gospel is going with power and authority into the every corners of the Roman world and up to the emperors itself. That's the amazing thing. When we suffer for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God does something beautiful. But we must not suffer for our own sins. If you're suffering for your own sin, if you're suffering for your own unbelief, if you're suffering for your own mistake, it's a terrible thing. It's a sad thing. But if you suffer for believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I should not be discouraged. As a Christian, when you suffer, when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and suddenly you lost your job, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you became sick, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and your family turned against you and you went through suffering. At that time, remember, Jesus Christ can turn your suffering into something amazing. He has some special plan for you. Don't give up. That is a valley of shadow of death you are going. And once you come out of that valley, there would be a beautiful pasture. That's what beauty out of ashes. Then Paul was particularly chosen for the Gentiles because Gentile became joint heir with Jews. Now you see, until Paul came along, until Jesus came along, Gentiles were outside the commonwealth of God. They, were, they had nothing to do with the Mosaic Covenant or Abrahamic Covenant. He says, now because of the gospel, Gentiles have become joint heir with the Jews. That means the children of Abraham. Heir is someone that inherits. When you have huge property, then your son or daughter becomes the heir to that property. If you are a king, the prince is the heir to the throne. Same way, Jews had something special from God. 
Jews had the promises. And now because of the gospel, the Gentiles have become joint heir with the Jews. We are equal. When God said to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. That blessing is not only for the Jews now. That blessing is also for the Gentiles. You and I. Those who believe in Jesus Christ have now become joint heir of the covenant of Abraham. Peter would say, before you were out of this covenant, you were not the people of God, but now you are the people of God. Therefore, Jews cannot boast about it anymore. Those days, Jews used to boast, I'm a Jew. They used to pray like this, Lord God, thank you for not making me a Gentile. Now they cannot pray this prayer because in Jesus Christ the gospel has destroyed this dividing wall and now we are equal heir of God's blessing. Gentiles have become the members of one body, the church. This is the new covenant. This is the old covenant. We are joint heir. We inherited whatever the covenant of God was promising. We have the authority in it. In Galatians chapter 3 say. The blessings that God gave to Abraham has come to us through the Spirit of God because we are redeemed from the curse of the law and the promises come to us. Now, in the new covenant, we are members of one body. Now, the new covenant is not belonging to the Gentiles alone. It also belongs to the Jews. Sometimes what happens, Christians have divided. The old covenant was Jews, a new was for the Gentiles. And so therefore, people like Hitler came and destroyed the Jews. There was so long church preached against Jew. The anti-Semitism was preached in the church. They hated Jews for so many years. 1878 years the Jews wandered in the world hated by the Christians. Because they misunderstood this fact. Thinking that we are the new covenant. These people are cursed by God. But Paul said no we are joint heir in the old covenant. And we are also members together. In the new covenant, Jews and Gentiles, a joint heir of the promise God gave to Abraham, Jews and Gentiles are the members of the church of Jesus Christ. And then, not only that, three times he repeats this unity of Jews and Gentiles. Gentiles became the sharers of the promise in Christ. Jesus is a Jew. Jesus is a Jewish Messiah. Paul said, they had the covenant, they had the law, they had the Messiah. But now, Gentiles are sharer of the promise in Christ. And then in Corinthians he said, every promise is yes and amen in Christ. Whatever the promises in Christ are, are for us. Jews and Gentiles together. Therefore, this is a beautiful, amazing, living temple God is building. So he went to his own experience to explain to them how suffering turns into something beautiful. I suffered for the sake of the gospel, but because I went to the Gentiles, today Gentiles have come into joint air, members together, and so sharers together in the promise of Jesus Christ. And then he says, by God's grace, Paul became the servant of the gospel, the mystery hidden for ages. The mystery, what Paul is talking in this passage, is the gospel. And it is hidden. Many people didn't know. In fact, of course, God wanted the, the nation of Israel to become the light to the nations, but they failed. The Jews became so blind and they thought that we are the special chosen people. Who cares about Gentiles? They thought God doesn't love the Gentiles. But God loved the whole humanity. He wanted the Jews to go and save the Gentiles, but the Jews refused to it. And therefore, now God revealed it to us and then by God's grace Paul and other apostles became servant of this gospel. We all are here today because of the grace of God. He chose us to become the ministers in this new covenant, in this new mystery that is revealed to us. So he was the least likely, God used him in an amazing way, he became the means of God's grace to Gentiles in the same way we too are here because of the grace of God. Therefore, in conclusion, therefore in Christ and through faith in Him, we can approach God with freedom. There is no bondage, no power of sin that strangles us, no fear of death, no law to keep, 
no rules and regulations to keep nothing we are free we don't have to climb mountain we don't have to go to the temple we don't have to go to the river we don't have to sacrifice an animal we don't have to do anything today by the grace of god we can come to god unfettered by anything in this world nothing can stop us now to come to the church we are free to come to god and then we can approach god with confidence there is no condemnation no fear no guilt when we come to church we should come with confidence sometimes christians have a struggle in their life maybe at home they told a lie maybe at home they fought husband and wife or one another maybe yesterday in the marketplace they did something when we make certain mistakes like this in life and it brings condemnation our conscience immediately tells us you are not right but in the gospel we have been given this confidence when you feel like you are not good enough what do you do you go to jesus christ you say i believe in the gospel of jesus i yes i did something wrong it was wrong it was bad i shouldn't have done it i'm sorry i did it lord it was my fault i was not right but thank you you have opened the door for me to come into your presence with confidence because you took away all my sins the moment i recognize my fault you have already met the penalty on the cross for that sin so every time you make mistake don't beat yourself and say oh i'm sorry oh i'm miserable human say lord i know i'm bad person but thank you for accepting me a sinner like this and thank you for forgiving me we come with confidence so when you come to church you may be having all kind of bad issues in your life and you come to church and you raise your hand and say lord jesus i don't want to do those things again but i want to worship you with confidence i come here into your presence to worship you with confidence so if there is any bondage in your life don't focus on bondage focus on the love of god focus on the grace of god focus on the manifold wisdom of god the riches of christ that has given to us and you will be a free person Sometimes people want to be free and they so much focus on the bondage on the sin and they can never come out of it but once you focus on what Jesus has done you will be able to come out so with that i say therefore paul says we must not forget the bigger picture when we suffer when you are suffering don't be discouraged don't so beat down upon yourself thinking that god has abandoned or something suppose you are a believer and you are suffering and out of that suffering faithfully you are going and you die what happens you lose nothing in the world you may have all the luxuries of yeah, all the wealth and riches you have everything but you never lived a godly life and you die you lose everything in this world you gave up everything for the sake of the gospel and you suffer so much and you die and you enter into the kingdom of heaven into the glorious riches of Christ for all eternity you lose nothing therefore i want you to be encouraged today that when you suffer for the sake of the gospel don't be discouraged and even in your own life when there if there is a suffering going on bring jesus into that suffering and say lord jesus this is what i am facing today what do you want me to do at this time Don't say why am i suffering you just say lord what do you want in my life what is your purpose in my life lord help me to be faithful to you help me to see this suffering come to an end believe in him he will bring you out of suffering much more stronger faithful victorious christian hum hindi mein thoda bata denge aap 